Hello, hello. Thanks for listening to Hits 105.5. I'm Bree, and you're listening to BS in the Afternoon, your ticket to the best adult contemporary hits, whether you're on Winding at Home, cruising through the city. We've got the soundtrack to your afternoon right here. But right now, I have um, my dear friend Joelle in here from Dancing Moon Society. Joelle, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. I'm excited to be here today. We're going to talk about some heavy stuff today. Oh, yes. Heavy. And so, um, got to get myself in order here. Um, we had a cacao ceremony this weekend. We did. It and was, that was pretty cool. It was really cool. And 14 women showed up for themselves, and it was beautiful. That is beautiful. I think um, it was... Everybody had, like, really cool vibes, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so, and everybody was there for the same thing. So, it wasn't like people are judging you, whatever. They're all there to heal. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing about any type of ceremony is that the people who come are ready to heal. They have already been doing the healing work. So, they understand that we all come from different spaces with different beliefs. And we're all going to hold that sacred space for each other without judgment. And it's beautiful. (laughs) That is beautiful. I think um, it was a really cool experience. Um, And we talked a lot about um, healing the heart space. And I asked you a good question today when you came in the studio. I said, how do you how do you know you need your heart space healed? For me, it's because of triggers. You keep getting triggered by certain things. You keep getting these like weird pains in your chest. It's anxiety. It's fear. It's you feel like you're stuck in between or like there's just a heaviness. I feel like when you're fully ready to start healing the heart, the heart tells you. The heart starts causing pain in the body. I mean, it's the center of all of life within us, within the ground, within animals. We can't do anything without the heart. So when we know it's time to heal, it'll tell us. That's important. Oh, yeah. I think that, so and I was talking to one of my clients today about this, is that We can start from the crown. We can start from the root. We could try to heal those spaces, which is fantastic. Start wherever you need to. But I think to really get down and dirty and really into it, the heart is where it's at. Because that's what carries the most grief, the most pain. It remembers because of the blood in our system, the blood in our veins, all of those things. So healing the heart, I think, is one of the most important aspects. Um, And so we're talking about healing your heart, which might be um out there for some people so i'm I'm gonna just put that disclaimer out there that i get it um that but but what does it entail to heal your heart i mean it's different for each person but what i try to teach people is that if you have anxiety if you feel like you're blocked if you have some sort of fear put your hand on your chest ask yourself what can i do to help the space that's hurting Tune into it. Listen. Just connect to the heartbeat. That's the baseline of how you start to heal that space. Because when you do that, maybe you'll see a color. Maybe you'll see a word. Or maybe you'll hear a word. Maybe you'll see an object. So one of my clients this afternoon, there were trees everywhere for her. And it was about centering herself, finding herself at the root system, the base of all life, and healing from the outside inward because sometimes when we have that heart heavy trauma we put up giant walls we feel like we're trees we feel like we're stone so you have to bury yourself into those spaces um i if if i have trauma or any healing that needs to be done it was buried it was buried (laughs) there was walls put up um and i think um that's kind of what we were taught when we were younger unfortunately is that to put those walls up Mm -hmm. and so um If you have someone that maybe you feel like you do need to have some healing, maybe you have a lot of anxiety um, or heaviness in the chest, those type of things, or a lot of triggers, um, what do you, what do you suggest that, what's the first step? Well, the first step is whatever you want to do it. So um, for people who are triggered by other people, you have to come to a place where you need to set boundaries, strong, healthy boundaries. Family is blood, but family is not always family. So if you have to set those hard boundaries for yourself to be healed, then you need to step aside from those people. Because it's not that you wish them ill or anything like that, but because at this point in life, they're only hurting you more than helping you. And you wish them well. You wish them good, good luck on their own healing journey. But for you to heal, you have to step aside. 
um, for trauma, different types of trauma, religious trauma, emotional trauma. It's about finding the center point of it all, going back to your childhood, connecting to the child piece that's hurting, going back to um, your adolescent self, your maiden self, the middle way self, and healing those aspects, asking each step, how can I heal this? How can I heal that? How can I accept what's happened to me and how can I forgive? Because the baseline of all of healing is forgiveness. You have to forgive to be able to move past those things because the more you hold on to fear, to anger, it turns into a seed. That seed builds up inside of you and it's just black and oozy and gross. But the more you heal, the more the shell peels away and you find your trueness. You find yourself and all of those things. Um, that's super heavy. Oh, it is. That's deep <laughs> right there. I think um, the idea of healing um, yourself as a person is something that is pretty new. Mm -hmm. um, of course, everybody's people have gone through healing journeys and things like that but um there's been a stigma mm -hmm. um do you think that there's still a stigma now i think within the mental health system there definitely is still a stigma i mean it can be really difficult for a lot of people to seek some sort of even traditional help with uh, therapy and stuff like that you know um shamans and curanderas they've been doing this for centuries i mean you look back at all the indigenous cultures we've been doing this for centuries it's been hidden away and it's been taken away because of um, conforming ideas. Um, but I think more people are starting to awaken into themselves because they realize that traditional medicine, traditional healthcare system isn't cutting it anymore. We've lost the connection between spirit and nature. You have to have both for balance. And yes, the, the medical system can be phenomenal. It can be great to help you along your way. But if you're stuck, if you don't know what to do next, that's where you need to heal spiritually. And you need to find something different that suits you. Yeah. And that's why you go to places like Dancing Moon Society. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you can heal. We have a journey, um, a journey on Wednesday. That's exciting. Oh, I'm very excited. I am. Uh, I'm excited when I say that. I am hesitant to <laughs> say I'm excited um, because, you know, sometimes um, when you have these, I, I just call it meditation, mm -hmm. meditation, you have these journeys, you, um, <coughs> sorry, um, you, you d might not have like these profound moments that you want um, to have or you'll have it after the fact. Oh, yeah. Sometimes... Even when I see, because I see a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients. Those are always my favorite because you can get one-on-one, -on -one, personal, in-depth. Sometimes it doesn't quite hit them in that moment. Even the information that I give for them, they just kind of look at me like a deer in the headlights. But it's after they leave when the integration process, that's why it's so important to give yourself that grace period. And I always tell people, give it like four days. You might get vivid dreams. A word might pop up. Maybe you just get triggered all of a sudden. Like, oh my gosh, this overwhelming sense of forgiveness and peace. So it just depends person to person. Um, my yesterday client, her grandmother came in and was holding her hand. And like I told her afterwards, like her name was Margaret. And she was like, oh my gosh, like how did you know? But it was in that sense of, of just knowing that we have something there and the acceptance of it all that helps us within our healing journey. And it can be so beautiful, but we have to have the patience. We have to have the dedication. We have to be willing to put ourselves in uncomfortable situations in our healing journey for us to fully heal and find that true enlightenment that we're seeking, the true self. Yeah, you got to be ready for it. Oh, yeah. And if you're not ready for it, then... Don't waste my time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've had clients that, you know, wasted my time and didn't want to do the work because a lot of people... They seek shamans or they seek curanderas or any spiritual um, person that you're seeking. They, they want the quick fix. You heal me. You do this. You do that. No, a real healer doesn't heal you. We give you the tools. We hold your hand. I'll hold your hair if you need me to. Whatever you got to do, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to guide you the entire way. But you have to get down and dirty. I'll get down and dirty with you. I'll get in the mud. You know, but you got to do it first. Yeah. So. No, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that theory. 
Yeah. You got to get in the mud first. You got to get in the mud you are first. Getting, you are raking yourself through the mud and, and the concept that you're trying to heal when you're healing. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I tell people all the time, healing, healing is muddy. It is, you know, it's not going to be pleasant. Um, but when you get to the other side of things, it's so beautiful. You learn how to live again. You look at the trees differently. You hear the, the bird of the song, the song of the bird beautifully. Um, and it just changes your entire perspective of life in general. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you for sharing all of this today. And hopefully if you um, are having a heavy heart or you you have something, um, try to begin your healing journey and, and just try to, um, to experience life. I think um, with that, we're going to have a short commercial break and we're going to listen to Wasting My Time right after this on Hits 105.5.